Hello there. The truth about the global health emergency of the past three years is being covered up, and the entire media is working 24/7 to distract you from actually thinking for yourselves. We are watching layer upon layer of distraction of one event after the other to keep our attention away from what has just happened to us and what is continuing to happen to us. UFOs, Harry and Meghan, Love Island, chemical explosions, and the conflict between two former Soviet nations all fighting for our attention. Now, don't get me wrong. The latter is of great significance, and people are losing their lives from that hideous conflict. But the inception of the conflict straight after the past three years makes me suspicious, and I agree with Richard about timing revealing the nature of the beast. I won't offer empirical evidence of the damage, and I will also not be doing great detail today because I see an overall picture emerging of distracting us all away from something very sinister. And there are some very well-informed doctors and scientists out there bravely doing their level best to get the truth out, despite all the financial and professional pressure being brought to bear against them. Because we are only allowed to listen to the science that will make the few even more wealthy and powerful than they already are, even if it brings great damage to society and our own health. And now that money, vast amounts of money, has been made by the few, and another massive transfer of wealth has been achieved, it's like those involved now want the whole episode to melt away quietly into history. And when was the last time you heard of a new variant? Apparently, the microscopic enemy has stopped mutating, or at least nobody is talking about it any more. I wonder why. Although there have been scare stories about new microscopic dangers lurking out there, possibly by someone hoping to profit from some scaremongering, and we even had the alleged employee of one big pharma producer saying their company had plans to manufacture a future event with a pre-prepared cure up their sleeve, so they could make a killing with it, in both senses of the word. And now some of the more ardent proponents of forcing people to stay at home, or of forcing them to take invasive procedures to keep their jobs, are bowing out of public life. And then some want to divert attention away from themselves. Mark Drakeford, the first minister of Wales, for example, is stepping down and said in October last year that there is no need for a specific inquiry in Wales because the world has moved on. And I would bet there will be many prominent politicians and scientists out there who are ardently hoping that the world has moved on. That people have forgotten what they and their families went through, and how many people suffered in isolation, and the rest of it. That the people have forgotten about all the grand G20, G7, and COP meetings that the great and good attended maskless during the event, while the proles had to sit indoors. That the people have forgotten the reason why they lost their job or business. That the people have forgotten about the billions. Nay, trillions of taxpayers' money that has been zooched up the wall by profligate politicians around the planet. I haven't forgotten, have you? But the people are now much poorer as a result, and they are also far less trusting of their politicians, and rightfully so, because these politicians have basically been engaged in industrial-scale psychological warfare. Against their own people, against the very voters that elected them into office, while the few have been allowed to raid the nation's coffers and walk away with pockets stuffed with gold, and they're also hoping we're not noticing the excess numbers of those leaving us earlier than they should be, something that should be a national scandal and something the science should be delving very deeply into. But the opposite appears to be happening. 
so it will be interesting to see the numbers when the Office for National Statistics opens its books on certain mortality stats on the 21st of February, courtesy of former Tory MP Andrew Bridgen. And we'll no doubt be told that all this will be thoroughly investigated. But that will no doubt be a glacial endeavour, taking so much time that only future historians will be interested in reading it. But right now we're being bombarded with news, any news, but not news on the true effect of government responses to the medical emergency. Even the previously settled science of net zero has been hotly debated in the media, a previously forbidden activity. But the one issue that we are prohibited from criticising lurks in the media shadows, hidden from view where possible. And asking the wrong questions can even land a Member of Parliament in deep hot water, as well as continue to threaten the livelihoods of dedicated medical and science professionals. And when you're not allowed to ask questions on a certain topic, then you know it is time to start asking deep and searching questions on it. In fact, it is essential that those questions are asked and that answers are forthcoming. Or we learn nothing. And we gain nothing except having been fleeced by the ruthless few. And now comes the flurry of media activity that will in time, they hope, cover up the past and put time between them and their crimes. So we're basically being herded down the muddy farm track like compliant cattle into our designated enclosures while being instructed to look neither right nor left and question nothing. We are being bombarded with all sorts of news, but the one piece of the media puzzle that is still missing is real informed discussions and debate about the truth behind a certain medical procedure and the actions governments around the world undertook to control us. We are told that our government was, and is, following the science in all things. But when a new truth emerges from the science of numbers regarding damage and death, and it starts diverging from the preferred narrative, then all discussion gets squashed. When the science of numbers starts indicating that something we were told would save humanity might actually be doing more harm than good, we find science suddenly becoming a politically controlled opaque closed book. And suddenly we start hearing about things like UFOs and the Pentagon not ruling out extraterrestrials monitoring the planet, or theories about who pressed the detonator button on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And just look at all the news coming out now about things like central bank digital currencies, net zero and 15-minute neighbourhoods. All of it leading to hot debates, of course but also diverting our attention away from the last two or so years of what has been a sustained attack on our mental and physical health. We must continue to question that which we are not allowed by our controllers to question. And we must not allow those that profited in such a ghastly fashion to get away with it. Isn't it strange that we're quick to inflict windfall taxes on energy companies, but not those that profited from the pandemic, especially those that sold us dodgy and unusable PPE or illegally took government money. How can that possibly be right? And remember, scientists are human and are just as prone as anyone else to follow the money, so keep asking those questions.